people on YouTube, this is Caffeine Jedi. How you guys doing? Motherhood is a really confusing thing to think about. So, I'm 30, I'm married, I am a homeowner, and for the most part I have enough of a sustainable income that I could survive. So the question of becoming a mother is creeping up a lot more in my head than maybe it did six, seven years ago. Now let me start by saying, I like kids. I don't get particularly annoyed with them when they're on the street. I mean, there's some kids who are total freaking assholes, the same that there are some people that are total freaking assholes. That being said, recently, I've begun to really contemplate, do I want to be a mother? Now, some might say, Stephanie, you have plenty of time to think about that, you're 30. But let me be the first to say that my family is infamous for having a very early menopause that comes around 40. And so between now and then, I gotta make some decisions. I also don't want to be a particularly older parent who can't enjoy their kids, you know, play with them because physically they're too exhausted. This whole idea of becoming a mother is so layered and complicated, and I think with many women, particularly my age, millennials of sort, some have just thrown in the book and been like, screw it, I, I can't. It's just too problematic. And I'll tell you some of the reasons, like, why I want to, why I don't. The idea of adoption comes up, surrogacy, this whole shebang. So I'm gonna try to make this as straightforward as possible, but my thoughts never seem to go in a linear pattern. They, they tend to do this swirly jump hurricane type motion, and then I hope that whatever's coming out of my mouth makes somewhat sense. Okay, when I was 22, I learned I don't hate children. This came from teaching. I actually enjoyed kids. I taught very young children, and it was fun, and I thought they were sweet, and I loved the energy, and I decided then and there, I want to be a mom. Definitely want to be a mom. Time went on, and I thought to myself, I want to be a mom, like, when I'm 27. 27 came around, and I'm like, Whoa, let, let's say 30. I'm 30 now, and I'm selling myself. Let's say 32, 33. The reason I start to think about all this stuff is that I think about myself and all the insane problems I have just functioning as a human being, as an adult. And there's so many that I couldn't possibly imagine bringing another life form into this to suffer with me along with my crazy insanity of, you know, anxiety attacks and panic and just Oh, moments where I just want to roll up into a ball and lay in the corner and put the blanket on top of my head and be like, I don't want the world to exist anymore. I'm just going to pretend that I live in this blanket and I'm just going to pretend this is my little cocoon and one day I will emerge a beautiful butterfly, but that day is not today. As time has kind of uh, started to creep up on me and as my career is going, well, we'll see where it's going. By the way, I got into a UCLA screenwriting professional course, so that's happening now, so yay for me! So, um, we'll see where my film career is taking me. To new and wonderful places, I hope. That's another thing. Motherhood, statistically speaking, is like the biggest blow to your freaking career you'll ever have. And that is eating away at me because I do want to be successful in my career. So much. So much that I stay up at night thinking about it. I spend every waking hour of the day just trying to figure out screenwriting and filming and what's the next thing that I have to get on and what festival should I, should I go to and what connections I have to make and all these things. They're just taking up all my time. All my brain capacity is there to the point where I've given myself something called TMJ. I don't know if you guys know this, but my jaw is just in a horrible state of constant tension because I've stressed myself about something insane. And yes, and of course, with being in the arts, you get the failures and you get the, you know, not accepted for the things you want to be in, and, and that just, you know, sometimes whacks you in the wrong way, and that's how you end up that little cocoon ball person under the blanket. I have a dog, and just taking care of Cashew is a lot of work. <laughs> is a lot of stress and also makes me worry about her all the time. Hmm, why hasn't she eaten today? Who did I... Is she walking all right? Does she have a bit of a limp, you know? Is she happy? Oh, she's barking! What could she possibly be barking at right now? I'm pretty sure it's the postman. So there's all these ideas that I constantly have, and this is just for a dog. So imagine a human being that you have to worry about every waking moment of the day. And it's a lot of pressure. And 
it's a lot to think about and we are so strangely, horrendously strict with parents nowadays. Like a parent is just not allowed to fuck up at all. That just makes you like the worst parent in the universe. Like, and your kid has to be with you all the time. That's another thing. It's like, it's not like back in the day where you're like, kids could go outside and play and have childhoods without you fucking supervising them all the goddamn time. Now you're expected to be that freaking parent in heaven forbid you're fucking not. It's a lot of pressure. As someone who, who feels like sometimes they're teetering on the edge of so much emotional strain. Do I want to do that to myself? But I do. I do actually want children. Now some might argue then, Steph, there's so, so many kids in the world, why don't you just adopt rather than have your own? I mean, look, those who adopt children, bravo to you, and those who think that this is just like the easiest decision in the world need to freaking take a goddamn good look at the process that is adoption. Maybe one day that will be the path I take and I decide to do that, but I have actually attempted to research this. You need to be prepared for, especially considering the age of the child you're getting, which might not always be a baby. You don't know what the circumstances are, or maybe you do, that brought that child to the place that they have parents that no longer want them or can't keep them. But whatever circumstance that was, it wasn't good. And there's gonna be a lot of psychological and emotional baggage that's gonna come with that one day or another. Now it might be nothing, it might be a lot. I've seen, I know people who've been adopted, so I know the roller coaster that can come with that. And just people in general who have abandonment issues either with their mother or their father or things like that. It's heavy and it's hard and we can't play that down. And I also don't want to make it seem like I just am like, yeah, it's all just adopt. Perfectly fine, perfectly normal, you know. Because again, would I be capable of dealing with a child who might have those emotional issues? And I am not so sure. And that's not even considering the fact that if you have your own child biologically, what may or may not be, you know, perfectly healthy in them. It's a hard question. There's also the aspect of actually being pregnant, like the physical aspect of it. And it is fucking rough. And I do not look at that and think, oh, how beautiful. I'm sure it is to some people, but like, oh, I'm terrified of it. I think it's like, oh God, that just seems like you're putting yourself through nine months of crazy. And if you're lucky, it's a smooth pregnancy. But if you're not, then you're just freaking sick all the time, swollen boobies, stretch marks, insanity. And then you have to actually give birth to the thing, thing I say as a baby. And holy shit, it's traumatizing. I'm like, oh, the whole aspect of it just scares me. So once upon a time, um, some friends of mine and I were talking about surrogacy and they said, oh, if someone's gonna get a surrogate, it's gonna be Steph. Steph looks like the type that she'd get a surrogate or she seems like the type. And maybe once upon a time, I didn't think that. But my mother is completely against it because she's like, no, you have to do that yourself. And then I always think to myself, I'm like, yeah, maybe I need to have that ability to throw it in my kid's face as all mothers do. I carried you for nine months and I gave birth to you whenever your kid's being a dick because your mom always does that to you. And yeah, maybe I need that card one day. The point of this is just to be like, this is just my rant confusion. And I'm wondering how many people out there are like me right now in a similar age, in a similar, similar period in life where just they haven't reached the point or haven't, or if they have, if you have actually made the decision to have children. Now, I, I know that accidents happen all the time, but I, I think after five years of being together, like I could kind of figure out that we, we've figured out the system that accidents will not happen for the most part. I mean, I don't know, I don't want to tempt fate, but we haven't had any. So those of you out there, tell me your experiences about uh, making the actual decision to have a child and what brought you there and why, because that'd be great to know. And those of you who don't want children, what brought you there and why? I, I particularly like to hear from people like myself who certainly have the ability to have kids, but perhaps aren't quite ready for them yet, or have decided not to. Um, or those who did, had the ability and did. Accident babies, you know, you're welcome to tell me your stories too. Anyway guys, that's all for now.